Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. This video is actually a request from one of you guys. Someone leave me a comment okay, on my earlier on video to discuss impedance matching using stuck matching. So this will be the objective of this video. How can we actually perform impedance matching by using either single start matching or double start matching. This will be the part 8 series discussion on impedance matching. So if you're keen to know more about impedance matching, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I really appreciate it. Let's start okay, firstly by understand what is the objective to do this impedance matching? When we actually achieve impedance matching, we actually ensure maximum transfer from the source all the way to the load. Which means that if we have an impedance matching, all the power, or maybe I should say that maximum power transfer will be able to transfer from the source to the load. And in order to achieve this impedance matching, we need to have a matching network that is sitting in between the source and the load. When we actually put this matching network, okay, the key idea is to transform the load into Z-in, okay, which means that Z-in must be the complex conjugate of Z-s. Okay, let me explain this further. Okay, when we actually look into this angle, which is Z-s, okay, basically this will be the complex impedance for Z-s. And in order to achieve impedance matching, okay, when we actually look into this angle here, we need to ensure that the Z in must be equals to the complex conjugate of Z S. When we actually manage to do this, we ensure maximum power transfer from the source to the load, and therefore we achieve impedance matching. So in short, how can we actually move the Z L all the way to Z in? So this will be the objective of this video, how to perform impedance matching using stuck network. There are actually many three methods to do impedance matching. The first one is actually using the lump element, the L and C, which I have discussed on the earlier on series discussion. The second objective okay, basically will be using this transmission line matching circuit or using this start matching using single start matching or double start matching so like what i mentioned earlier on this will be the objective of this video how we can actually perform matching network by introducing additional transmission line and then last but not least we are also able to do impedance matching by using quarter wave impedance transformer again this will be further later on discussion on impedance matching Okay, let's quickly understand to do a quick recap. Okay, why we do not actually prefer to do lump element, which is the L and C, okay, which I have done the discussion earlier on. Okay, it's because the inductor and capacitor, they can be very lossy, which means that they can have high loss and actually high frequency. Hence, we actually prefer to add in transmission line. When we actually add transmission line, the loss will be mi minimized as compared to inductor and capacitor or lump element, okay, especially true in a high frequency application. So in short, okay, as we know, lump element basically will be more effective at low frequency. However, at high frequency, they bound to have more loss. And therefore, in order to solve this issue, we actually want to do impedance matching using some matching, like for example, single start matching or double start matching. Let's understand what is actually a start matching. 
Okay, the transmission line section actually produce a motion along a constant. Okay, so basically this is what we call a BSWR circle on the Smith chart. Okay, so on the next slide, we will take a look what is actually this BSWR on the Smith chart, how we actually can draw this BSWR onto the Smith chart, which I will explain on the next slides. It is sometimes possible to provide a matching by only adjust the length of the line. Okay, so this is actually the node. This is actually the source. So over here, you can see that basically I introduce a transmission line, okay, a length of transmission line. I maybe can do a impedance matching, okay, typically by just adjusting the length of the line. So this is what you want to see. Let's again take a closer look. Okay, so this will be the ZL. When we want to do this impedance matching, when I actually look into this angle, Remember, this Z in to be complex conjugate against ZS. So over here, you can see that this is 50 plus J50. And in order to achieve impedance matching, okay, I need to be complex conjugate. So therefore, the value should be 50 minus J50 ohm here. Okay, so now we are ready to draw the BSWR onto the speed chart. Okay, firstly, before we can draw the point, okay, we need to normalize this number. Okay, normalize means that I need to do a divide by 50. So this ZL will be equal to 0 0.4 plus J 0 0.2. So this is actually the load impedance after normalize. Okay, so this is the explanation here. The key idea how can we actually do impedance matching is to transform okay, this load impedance, which is 20 plus J 10 ohm, to the complex conjugate of the source impedance, okay, which is this will be the source, so we need to do a complex conjugate against the source, which is 50 minus J50, okay, so as to provide a matching network between the load and the source. Okay, so this is actually how we can do this start matching. Okay, let's understand this circle here. Okay, so firstly, remember, okay, this will be the ZL. Okay, so ZL will be 0 0.4. Over here, you can see that this will be 0 0.4, 0 0.2, this is a positive, so I know that it will be on the upper section of the speed chart. So basically, I plot this point here. So next, okay, I need to draw my BSWR circle. How can I draw this BSWR? So I have this ZL point over here, right at the center of the speed chart, okay, which is the one here. Basically, I use my so-called uh, my compass. Okay, I put this reference point at the center of the speed chart. I actually draw a circle. Okay, so at this circle, basically, will be my BSWR circle. So next, if you still remember, okay, in order to achieve complex conjugate okay, versus the Z source, I need to achieve this 15 minus J50. And again, if I normalize this, this will be equal to 1 minus J1, right? So basically, 1 minus J1, you can see that this is 1 and this is minus J1. So if I'm able to reach this point, then I'm actually successfully doing this impedance matching. So this will be the matching point. I need to shift my ZL from this point all the way to this point. Then I will be able to achieve impedance matching. So there are actually two ways. Either I have the length of the transmission like this length here, or I have another length slightly longer so these two lengths actually able me to transform the ZL into complex conjugate of ZS. So therefore, I will be able to achieve my goal is to do impedance matching. So basically, this is what I want to explain on impedance matching using start matching. Just the additional of this transmission line, okay, I actually transform the point from ZL to a matching point so as to achieve impedance matching. There are mainly two ways to achieve this start matching. Okay, one first method is to use this single start matching. Okay, so this is a very popular matching techniques. Basically, either we use a single open circuit or a short circuit length of transmission line, okay, which is also a start. Okay, connected either in parallel or in series with the transmission line at certain distance from the load. Okay, so let me explain this. So this is actually a certain distance from the load. 
Okay, so this is actually a shunt. Okay, you can see that this is a shunt configuration. This is a series stop configuration. So either I can use an open circuit or short circuit. So this part here, I can be either open or short circuit. Same for the series stop. Either it is open or short circuit stop. Either this shunt or this series and properly control the D, the distance okay, from the load. I actually able to achieve impedance matching as I have illustrated earlier on. Okay, this shunt stop I actually prefer okay for micro strip line or strip line, while series stop I actually prefer for slot line or container wave guide. Okay, so basically in short, this shunt okay they may be quite useful for micro strip line configuration or strip line. Okay, while wow, this series stop is mainly used for slot line or CPW, coplanar waveguide. Single stop tuning circuit is often very convenient because the stop can be fabricated as part of the transmission line. As you can see over here, this is a single stop matching. Okay, so this is actually part of the fabrication process as what you mentioned over here. And with this, we actually minimize any lump element. As I mentioned earlier on, lump element can be very lossy. So basically, we just introduce a single stop. We actually manage to so-called match this line all the way to the connector. Let's say the connector is 50 ohm. We are able to perform this impedance matching by introduce this stop over here, okay, the shunt stop over here. So there are actually two adjustable parameters. Firstly, is the distance D, as I mentioned earlier on, this will be the distance D. Another one is basically the Y, okay, which is the reactance of the stop. Okay, basically by properly control either the distance and also the Y, the reactance of the stop, we actually may be able to do this impedance transform using this single stop matching. Next, if you find this video useful, please consider to like this video and also subscribe to this channel. What I want to quickly discuss will be the double stop matching. Okay, the single stop is able to match any load impedance to a transmission line. However, they suffer from the disadvantage of require a variable length of lines between the load and the stop. As I mentioned earlier on, you need to properly control the length, okay, the D, okay, basically so-called uh, on the load side over here, okay, I need to control the length in between the stop and also the load. I need to ensure this so as to do this impedance matching. Okay, this may not be a problem for a fixed matching circuit, but will probably pose some difficulty if an adjustable tuner was desired. In this case, the double stop tuner which use two tuning stop in fixed position can be used. Okay, so basically this will be the advantage of using double stop matching. However, I like to highlight that this double stop matching may not be 100% able to match any load impedance. So if you want to do a matching on any load impedance, it actually prefer to use a single stop. As double stop, I cannot guarantee that it will be 100% able to match any impedance. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.